this uh, XRP uh, fuel filter, which basically filters the oil that's going from the oil housing to the turbo. And now we're gonna, I see it has little gasket O-rings here. So it says use brown for gasoline or use black for alcohol or nitro methane. So we're gonna use this one because we're gonna use ethanol. So um, I'm assuming that this goes here like this because there's no instructions on this so we're gonna figure that goes like that and tie this down and if it's wrong then well this is gonna leak how tight it's supposed to be I have no idea I don't know what size this is <laughs> so oh all right that worked Are you gonna be able to tighten that down a little better when it's on the turbo? Um, it's wiser to do it actually when it's like this. But you're not gonna be able to put too much torque on it. I'm not, and then, I mean right there, pretty much feels like it's maxed out. So I don't see, I mean, it seems like it's okay. I don't, I, I don't think it's gonna need like that fucking much to. So right now, what are we doing? Uh, I'm attempting to put this fitting for the oil on here, but it uh, seems impossible. Uh, right now, we're putting the gasket that goes to the turbo to manifold. Well, I guess manifold to turbo. But um, And you sprayed the gasket with that copper stuff? Yeah, uh, copper sealant. So that should help me out, but I might need your help actually uh, to do this. What are you gonna do? Well, since we don't have studs, since we're gonna just put straight up bolts. Put the bolt? Actually, yeah, put a bolt through here. Am there I sticking goes. out? It's going? Yeah. Going over here. All right, so um, we're putting all bolts on here because originally there's two studs in the front and uh, two bolts in the back. But we're just gonna use all bolts. Originally, this is how it was. So we have um, got two studs and then two bolts in the back, and that's originally how the how the manifold to the turbo goes on. But since we end up, since this, when I bought this one, it didn't have any studs and it was, I can just put all the bolts in. So we're just going to do all that. And so we're using the same bolts that are here. So we're going to put them back here now and it should work. Why, why did you go that route? Um, for one, because I hate studs now. I've grown to hate them. And two, uh, it would make it a lot easier and probably less of a hassle to take them out. And I've heard a lot of people do this too. So, especially a lot of Evo 10 guys. <laughs> I just want to put a, I guess a generous amount of this. I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong, but stay with me. And I guess start spreading it. What is that that you're putting on? Um, Anti-seize. Um, I know a lot of people use like copper ones, but I don't know. It's the only shit I found at the store. So hopefully it works. Hopefully. It's like a glove. What are we going to do now? Uh, now we're going to try to put everything back in here. <laughs> so we're going to put the whole turbo everything back in there and hopefully I can do it. Alright. Eh. Ah, so awkward. Mm. Oh, 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 I'm having trouble. I don't know what I'm hitting. Oh, fucked up. Okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go back. Oh, we forgot the little clamp for the wastegate, but I think we could do that after. Oh, shit. No, we need to do it now. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, that was really good because that would be a bitch. Yeah, um, okay. 
So I'm going to attempt. I don't know whether I'm doing this right or wrong, but we're gonna try to preload the wastegate. This is an 18 piece side wastegate. Um, and from what I read, you basically start turning. And so it's about like halfway onto this thing. It looks really sketchy, but apparently that's the way it's done. So I guess when, when, when this thing is like around half of that, see right here? So I guess this has to be just a little further in and then you got to kind of yank it back and then put it in its place. Uh, you know what? That seems about like it's probably going to do it right there. So now, gotta pull this shit. Oh, that's going to be the hard one. Oh yeah. And what uh, pound springs in here? Uh, 18, 18 pound spring. So, let me get gloves, I'm sorry. Ah, there you go. Um, I guess that should be it. <laughs> and from that point on, just lock this locking nut, put the pin in, should be good to go. Uh, we're now we're going to put the turbo back into the car, so hopefully I can get this. Because I tried it earlier and I uh, wasn't successful. You were so, hitting? Yeah, I had the downpipe connected uh, on one of the, the hangers and it was hanging up and it was hitting on the oil return. Oh, wow. Big dummy. And we forgot to preload the wastegate. Oh, yeah, that too. So oh, that beast. Oh, fuck that, but the beef I just dropped it. What do I feel like I, uh... No. Ooh. Guess that's that. Just gotta make sure that this line, because I don't even know where the hell... Oh. There we go. So now we're gonna end up, uh bolting up the manifold and we're gonna hook up all the lines for the coolant and oil after we do that radiator and i guess oh prime the turbo but to prime the turbo oh we gotta lock one of these bolts that's oh right yeah, yeah yeah so that's a Where's that's a that? bolt it's right here so that we actually have to um we're just tighten it up we're eliminating uh the oil from the head so Originally, I used to get the oil from there. So now, since I'm rerouting it, I'm getting it from the oil filter housing. Uh, it's basically block. It's a block off bolt. So that's all we're gonna do. Yep. Give a disclaimer of your dilemma that happened. What do you mean? Your dilemma that you had to cut it off from and the shop, so people know when they order shit from that shop. Well, the shop's legit. I mean, the shop is really legit. I don't know. Maybe it was just me or just one time, but I ended up getting. The kit, the oil relocation kit, whatever it is, from uh, Matt Performance. And I ended up getting this bolt, which I'll take it off right now. When I got it, I was putting it in by hand, thank God. And oh, I just, shit. And I just dropped it, so now we're going to be trying to find it for like 10 hours. <laughs> Either way, um, yeah, well, that bolt was about 15 millimeters long, and it was supposed to be anywhere from 10 to 12. So every time I went on there, it felt like it bottomed out inside. So I was like, I, I emailed them and they're like, oh no, it should be fine. Check your, make, make sure your threads are clean. No, wait, wait, I, quote unquote, we've sold, what did they say? We've oh, sold. we've sold thousands of these kits. You should be fine. I was like, okay. Was, uh, he recommended just go and just tie it down. I was like, dude, I'm not gonna tie it down. What happens if I end up screwing something inside the head? So I put it on a forum and then I told people like, dude, do you think this bolt looks too long? And everybody said, yes, it looks about 15 millimeters long. Sure enough, I measured it and it was. And I ended up cutting down to about 10, 11 millimeters. And then you confirmed it with FP, right? Yeah, with Force Performance, because I was cheap and I didn't want to spend 250 bucks on their kit. <laughs> so, I mean, this one wasn't cheap, it was 150 bucks. But I mean, 
people use it and it's been good but that was the only thing from that that i've noticed that i've got maybe other people haven't but i did so all right well now let's find that bolt yeah all right after 10 minutes of finding this goddamn bolt that fell this is the one i was uh talking about earlier um when i got it it was like about here so i had to shave it down and cut it and now like i said now it's about 10 11 mil millimeters so now it's perfect now i can actually go in there and it actually is not bottoming out so i know it's safe and everybody everybody confirmed oh it should be 10 to 11. sure enough that's what it's supposed to be and that's what it is and that's what i did now i'm putting it in so you guys can see the turbo is installed we haven't bolted it on but it's there there's paper in here so we don't get bolts in there that'll be taken out we gotta forget to take that out be bad. Be <laughs> we'll remember but just so you guys get a better look it's in there and then uh, we're still figuring out intake we have two options so we'll get to that point we're either going to use this guy or the and one that was on there before i want to explain why um the reason why i have this one this is a force performance and i have that coupler uh -huh. well the reason why i bought that coupler is because i want to use um my aem intake the only reason why i want to use it because it has a carb sticker on it and that's basically it. that's the only reason why i want to use it but i want to i'm going to see i'm going to end up mocking that up see if everything lines up good i'm going to do this one too and i'm just going to see which one i like better at that point so all right so we'll carry on and tighten this stuff down all right so we pretty much um buttoned up everything on under the hood right here as far as uh bolts go uh we ended up following this for the manifold and probably really i don't know if you can see it or not but that's kind of the way according to uh the mitsubishi i believe it's uh it's like the service thing uh we follow that so we'll put we'll put a link in the description we'll, we'll try to find the link yeah we'll try to find it. <laughs> i'm sure we'll find something well basically at this point yeah we've uh, bolted everything up again uh we did mental torque because we didn't have actual torque bench um but i think we'll be fine what do you think yeah, i think we'll be all right so um time will tell at this point all right all right so now what we're gonna do there's a there's a plug up here that goes on the oil filter oil filter housing and uh there's a there's a bolt in there that we have to break i just don't want to break the actual oil filter housing because that would be horrible and it'd be such a setback that i don't want to do that so what we must do is uh from what i read from force performance and everybody and their mother get a torch this is what i got um it's the best thing i can find as far as kind of fitting under here because it's not that much room so they say heat it up for about 30 to 60 second intervals and uh try to break the bond because there's a blue loctite on there so that's what we're going to try to attempt to do I'm really hoping it's gonna be, you know, not a big deal. Everybody said that's the easiest part of actually doing this oil thing, but for me, like I'm dreading it. I really am. <laughs> I don't know why, but I am. <laughs> and I'm really hoping that's the right one I'm taking off too. I should have been counting, which is one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Well, how are you gonna count from there? We're like fucking 15 Mississippi's in. We'll stop at 20. 10 Mississippi, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 30. Oh, I should have done it quick, man. Hold it at the top, too. Hold it in. Oh, you need a breaker bar? <laughs> no, I need to heat it up more. Fuck my back. Uh, <laughs> Alright, fuck, we do it again. Go for it. One, two, Ten more seconds. I mean, I went. Go to that big old Z and G beat they have over there at that alley bridge. No. No. Oh. Yeah. Ah.
And I heard about that too. I heard about it. like once you hear that that crack, well, don't worry about it because you broke the bond. Now it would be really dumb for my dumbass to try to grab this because I'm pretty sure it's hot. There we go. Success. Trying to install this uh, fitting that I'm going to use. That's going to uh, for the oil housing for the line for the oil return line for the turbo, but. As I am trying to hand tighten, just to uh, check it out, it's not, uh, it's not going on. Oh, wait. <laughs> it went on. A tightening belt. Timing chain, no, it's a timing belt. All right, so now what I'm doing, uh, now that I put on the fitting, um, I'm going to put this on. I'm going to just kind of mock it up to see, because I'm kind of lost as to which way it's supposed to run. So I'm going to do a little quick mock-up and uh, see how the line runs. And then after I feel confident of how it goes, then I will throw some thread seal on this, and then we will uh, tie it down, and then go from there, and then it goes to the turbo. All right, so now we have finished uh, routing the line that goes from the O filter housing to the turbo because now the turbo is going to get fed from the, the oil housing. So basically, this is the way I think that this is this is the way it should be routed. So we just zip tied it to these hard lines right here, and then zip tied it to this one. Uh, yes, we're going to cut them. So right now we did that. Then I put some uh, some thread seal in here and try to torque them as much as I could without really messing anything up. Um, downpipe is installed. Uh, that's been on there too. It's a little hard trying to get these angles, so we just kind of did it off camera, but you guys get the gist of that. We also put it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, right there, there is the, the oil return line from the oil pan. Now put that back on, brand new gaskets. And on the bolts, it has uh, little gaskets that go on there too. I bought those brand new, so change those out. Hopefully it doesn't leak because I don't want anything to leak. That sucks. And after that, right now we're gonna hook up the all the piping, basically all the intercooler piping and whatnot. I'm gonna show them the line. So the line starts from there. Yeah. Where the oil um, filter goes. And you can see it runs, runs, runs through there. Then it goes right up, right by the intercooler. We got that little filter, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the filter that you're supposed and to run. And it's the high pressure line, and then it goes up into the turbo. I don't know if you guys can see. I can't really. Film. It's so hard to film from here, but uh, it goes up through here, up to the turbo. And you guys saw uh, when the turbo was out, we bolted that on first. So it's a two piece. So yeah, it's two lines. So you know, but all that all that is done. And uh, like I said, now just hooking up the rest of the stuff up. Um, after doing that, put some coolant in the car, prime the turbo because uh, we keep on reminding ourselves that let's prime the turbo. Because if we don't, then we're just gonna screw everything up probably. And let it sit, let it idle, see if everything's fine. Make sure it's not leaking, no uh, exhaust leaks or oil leaks, especially oil leaks, because that's what I don't want. Because everybody hates those. And then I guess uh, we'll be back shortly and then we'll see what happens. All right, so now we're gonna talk about what I did for the air intake. Um, I had to use my AM intake, my, the one I originally uh, was using before. I was gonna use this uh, force performance intake, but I noticed that <clears throat> it wasn't really fitting on. I don't know, maybe because it's my uh, intercooler pipes, but it wasn't, it wasn't lining up the way I liked it to line up. So what I did, I ended up buying on eBay I ended up buying a 
it's a three inch to 3.25 uh, reducer coupler which goes from the fp 84 millimeter to my three inch uh, am intake and right now we're going to show you how it looks all right so what i used was this right here which is a three inch to 3.25 so it can go into from my fp green to the three inch am and like i said the reason why i want to use it too is because carb sticker and I like the intake, it's actually served me really well. But I use this, I bought this on eBay, I believe it was like 11 or 14 bucks, somewhere around there, under 20 bucks for sure. Okay. And it seems like it's gonna work really well, so time will tell. So what are we doing now? Um, adding coolant, and I think we just did it. Wanna come look at it? Coolant master? So are you gonna pull it out? What do you think about that? Yeah, so just leave it the cap off and run the car. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just finished doing the the coolant. Uh, now I already did the oil. If anybody's wondering what I use, I use a uh, Robling Racing Synthetics NW30 VR1. And it has to be the black bottle. It has more like zinc and whatnot. It's supposed to be good. Plus, it's recommended by FP Green or by Force Performance. So that's done. That's done. Uh, now we just gotta give it some cranks, I believe. I need to reap again real quick, but I think it's like 30 or 60 seconds for some cranking. But uh, we'll get back and we'll, we'll show and them. Explain how you're gonna prime the turbo without the car turning on. So essentially what that does, what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect, um, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not even know. I'm not too sure what it is, but I know it's this plug back here. It's, uh, it's this one. Pretty sure. Which one? This one right here. Uh huh. Just connect that, and I believe it disables the fucking uh, the spark. So it just keeps on cranking and cranking and cranking. So it starts shooting turbo in there. So that way, when it's going, it's not, it's not going to run it dry. And um, the second part of security is that we have a key that what? Oh uh, well, I have a blank key, so I can technically just put it in there, and it's the immobilizer is going to activate, and the car won't start. But I have to find that. So I think we're just going to do this. And hopefully it doesn't start. Okay. I disconnected this guy. And to be honest, we have no idea if that's the right one. Well, we checked on the forms real quick, so but we couldn't really find anything. But that's what it said for Evo 10, so. No, well, for Evo 10, the only thing I got was crank for 10, 15 seconds, and somebody else said five seconds. But I, I think 10, it seems more on the right side. 15 seconds around there. So... It should be okay. Alright. Okay, and then we have Art. He's gonna, he's our friend. He's gonna help us. Uh, check the leaks. He's gonna check leaks for us. He has an LED light. Go for it. down here if it's leaking it looks good down here wait 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 we have something leaking yeah cool it what's leaking it looks like it's leaking coolant and it's leaking from this drain that we have here but this little hole I don't know what it is Let's see wait wait is it leaking from there yeah here's the drain wait it's not leaking from the drain from right here that's where the water comes out, so you gotta time this. Do you guys time it more? Yeah. Oh fuck. Alright. Oh. He tightened the the drain, so we're still looking good. It just stopped leaking right now. So But it's good that we caught that um here and not on the streets. Oh, I know yeah. I got this like all fucked up, but my car's never leaked before. First time it's ever leaked. Well, now that I'm down here, let's check this shit. <clears throat> Fuck yep. Or is that little light down there, the the um, LED one? We can uh, please pass it, pass it by. Oh, sweet. So he's just checking for leaks right now from the oil, high pressure oil line to the turbo. Yeah, well, I hope it's getting oil. <laughs> Well, that shit looks good. We 
look good down here in the leaks. Good. Everything's looking pretty solid, guys. So I think we're gonna be all right. Now we gotta just, I think, turn it on, right? Well, you do that as the car heats up, the coolant. So we're gonna let the car warm up, check for leaks, and then uh, turn on the heater, let all the coolant run, and get the car to running heat or running temp, whatever and uh, get the air bubbles out and keep filling it up with coolant. All right, so I'm gonna connect this plug back again, which should um, ignite the distributor, or not the distributor, the coil, these coil packs, and get spark to the motor. And then right now, Giovanni's checking for oil. Also art, we should be doing pretty good. All right, guys, so this is the first time the car gets turned on with the FP Green. Wish us luck. Fire. E85, it's cold. E85, it's cold. It's on. Down there and look real quick. Come on, check check the filter. Get in there before it gets hot. Oh oh, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. No, it's, huh? Turn it off. It's the thing burning. Huh? It's the uh, the copper stuff burning. No, 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 no. The copper's burning. The copper's burning. Yeah. Ceiling? That's what it is. Yeah, you're good. You're good. So the ceiling is heating up right now, and that's common. Yeah. All right. All right. The copper gasket. All that, and it's really burning off uh, whatever grease that we we're touching too. So whatever is like on the I'll do all the turbo line. Still cool that? Right. Everyone's gonna be like, dude, turn that shit off, it's smoking. If it doesn't stop in a bit, we'll... Yeah, yeah. Alright, so we got the car on right now. As you can see, it stopped smoking. The seals, uh, the copper sealant that we put on, finally burnt on and all our greasy uh, fingerprints on the exhaust manifold finally burnt on as well. Um, we didn't get to test out. I'll let Giovanni explain. Yeah, we didn't get to test out the car on the streets. Uh, we did take our time doing this. And we're now at 32 in the morning over here. We're in California. So we're going to test it out tomorrow. Uh, we're not going to run it really hard. We're probably going to hit just a little bit of boost, but not too much. Just to make sure the turbo is actually working. Because right now we got a little scared because usually on the, on the stock Evo 9 turbo, you can, uh, you can free rev it and then you can kind of hear a back spool. Well, with this one, being that it's a bigger turbo, a different wastegate, uh, it didn't really do it. It took a lot more revving. Uh, we had to rev it like around 55, 6,000 RPMs. And then you can hear the turbo spur, like, okay, so that, that, that's good. Um, after that, I mean... No only, leaks, really. Well, no leaks. No, we have no leaks. And also, 
out of everything, we did everything correct that we feel we did right. Because we have no leaks, nothing, everything seems fine, everything sounds good. But we're going back to the wastegate, the way we preloaded the wastegate. Again, this is the way I've seen videos on people, this is how they do it, this is how they preload it. There's more, there's better ways of doing it, but um, this kind of seemed like everybody was doing it this way. But we have a feeling that it may not be the best way. <laughs> So Alex, he's gonna say, you know what, well, man, it's the waste gate. It's gonna be the waste gate. And he might be right, it might be the waste gate. Luckily for us though, it's not too hard to get to if I have to. But once I take it to the shop, I'll let them figure that out. Um, my tuner's gonna end up tuning it. And then we're still gonna throw bigger injectors because right now we are on 1000 cc's. And we're gonna switch to FIC's uh, 1450s, which I already have. I just don't wanna put them on or not because then the car really runs shitty. So I'm gonna wait and just have it done over there because I don't wanna drive like that. Bad enough, it's. Well, that's actually really not bad right now, to be honest with you. It sounds good. It's not stumbling or anything. So so tomorrow we'll go on the run and we'll film that? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we get time. We're going to go. We'll take it out. Um, and then we'll see how it drives. We'll check out the temperatures. We'll go back. We'll check for oil leaks, coolant leaks, any leaks. And uh, so far, we've been really good as far as that. So I guess uh, stay tuned and we'll see what happens. All right. It's a wrap. All right, guys. So right now we're gonna test drive the Evo 9. Make sure that it that it boosts because we couldn't put it in a preload to make sure you want to stand over here. So make sure it doesn't uh, catch on fire. So we're gonna actually take that jug with water to make sure that it doesn't catch on fire and see if it leaks under pressure or load. What else do you have to say? Um, I don't know. I guess we'll just find out what happened. I'm kind of afraid. I'm hoping everything is fine. <laughs> Alright. So we're going to go in a little bit and uh, we'll film that for you guys. Uh, we're going to go for a test drive. And we're going to see if we... Uh, I guess we can kind of hear the turbo spool. Because I said we were kind of free of it and it can sound normal. Then again, it's an upgraded wastegate, bigger turbo. And then we're going to see if uh, maybe under pressure we may get like a mysterious leak or whatever. But if it passes this, then I'm thinking we're pretty good as far as the lines go. Um, but yeah, we're just going to... We're just gonna drive and, and, and see what we hear if anything is out of the ordinary. So, we're not really gonna get into boost. Yeah, we're not really. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's go. Fucking fly. See why it wouldn't, but I think that's it, right? Yeah. Under load, it seems like it's a little better. That was only like two pounds. Did you hit two pounds? Yeah. ridiculous anymore but I want to see if we can actually kind of feel a little you know you know once you get boosted it, it kind of throws you back a little bit I'm not I'm just trying to get a little bit of that I would really like to know if we're getting oil past that little filter you put in like, what uh, happens if you left something in there or something nah I made sure inside the the, the little cartridge yeah. thing <clears throat> nah everything should be good there I didn't leave anything in there everything was as as it should be
kind of went a little bit. Yeah. Wow. It's cool the I was like like uh, eight pound right there. Uh, again, we're driving <clears throat> not hard, so we're not romping on it. And like things like this with this car always gets me. Like, especially this one, man. This is my baby, man. I bought this thing brand new. So doing things like this to this, and, and then like it not running right, kind of gets me worried. But I kind of came to the point where, you know what, as we're older now, you know, if it messes up, what do we do? We fix it. What? McLaren. What is it called? The LP something or not? I don't know, like MP. 12 C, I don't know, something like that. We see that all day long around here. So right now we're gonna check if it's leaking. And there's a GTR, just chilling. Uh, everything seems to be okay. Um, nothing seems like it's leaking, it seems like we're, we're doing good, so. It's still smoking, but I'm assuming that's from the fucking copper gasket. We should be good. Now we're going on the freeway. Yep. Cool, these guys didn't know how to drive over here. <laughs> huh? It'd be nice if people knew how to drive. All right guys, so we're done test driving it and it was a success, the car did not leak at all. Um, so how'd you feel about doing the swap? Uh, the swap itself was really easy. It wasn't that hard at all. Uh, we took about two days only because we took our time and we were filming at the same time. But realistically, this could be done in about a day. I want to say about maybe five, six hours. If you really dedicate yourself and not drink beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's not that hard at all. It's really not. All right then guys, so uh, this, don't go by us. We're not professionals. This is two guys in a garage having fun, and uh, we're not reliable if you guys f your car up. So yeah. don't go by our words just for pure entertainment. Yeah. Also, uh, are we going to film when we tune it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's okay. try to set it up so the day you go get tuned, uh, we could cap capture that part too, because I think that's pretty entertaining. Yeah, and hopefully uh, everything goes good. It doesn't go kaboom yeah. on the dyno. So, yeah. <laughs> and the only thing that's left is uh, installing. Uh, what injectors else? injectors some 1450s and, and retune and retune and that's some a, modification on the fuel pump yeah i'm gonna just punch out the relief on the 255 yeah if it works it works if it doesn't then i'm not stalling i gotta get retuned again yeah so uh i don't know when that next episode will be i don't know so just stay tuned yeah all right bye guys sometimes i do get tired of driving my car because of the whole e85 setup Kind of sucks because the gas stations there's not too many of them and they're basically 20 miles one way or the other what makes me happy is the power so i'm willing to sacrifice driving to these gas stations to be a car enthusiast i believe there's two types of people in the car world um, there's a person that's not a car enthusiast that just drives a car from point a to point b and the car enthusiast is a person that's driving on the freeway and sees another modified car and notices